Well, hello, hello, hello. I have been sort of busy today cutting out circles. I want a variety of colors because the next thing that I want to make is going to be used using circles. I have used my handy dandy fruit cup. I love tracing it because the plastic is nice and sturdy. It has this little dip in the bottom. So when I place my finger there, has a place to rest and, and my hand doesn't really wiggle. So I've been using those circles, those fruit cup circles for something I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure how many I need, but I have in mind what I want to make. So I'm looking for one more color, one more page that has a lot of one color in it, something Ooh, there's a red page in this magazine that has a lot of red there. Tear that out as carefully as possible. Set my magazine to the side. And right about there, that's a good spot. I'm going to trace that and then cut it out. Then we'll get started turning these circles into something magnificent. It's good to be resourceful and use what you already have at home. I have magazines, old magazines, that I like to use from time to time for the pictures and just for the colors. The colors in some magazines are just so bright and beautiful and it's very fun to use the magazine pages instead of construction paper so you can get some different reds and blues and greens. I even found a page that had grass. It was just the most beautiful green grass. I found blue from cloudy skies and wow that's a pretty red this one is even really really red well it's from a lighthouse it's from the light in a lighthouse found that a little while ago and I held on to it because I thought that red was very vibrant but even this red is very nice it's, this looks like rosy red like a rose so we're talking about making art using circles, but we're going to be using parts of the circles. So, if you have a circle that hasn't been cut, like this one, that's called a whole circle. But there will be times when you'll want to cut it into halves, or fourths, or eighths, in order to have different shapes to use in your design. Now this design that I'm using is just going to be sort of geometric because we're using circles and it's going to have balance. So what I've done is I folded this paper into fourths, folded it in half and folded in half again. The reason why is because I want my design to have balance and so I want to know where the center is and how to line things up going in different directions. This is where I'll start. Okay, first, let's decide which one of these we might want to use. Hmm. I like this blue. Okay, let's get started with making some of these different fractions. Well, halves is easy. To do something in half is easy. in half. But wait, I think I want to make this one force. I like this color. I want to spread it around more in my design. So I'm going to start by cutting it in half and cutting it in half again. Now folding it helps with getting your fractions as equal as you can and even as you can. 
So I have fourths, four fourths. Okay, push those to the side. I think I'll use both of these blues. Let's do halves. Let's put these halves to work in our design too. It's simple. I say fold in half like a taco. This paper is wonderful for making a nice crisp fold. It's relatively easy to cut and is very definitely very beautiful. Okay, halves. Well, I'm going to start going, gluing this down. And I'm also going to show you a really neat trick. Well, I'm taking this circle and I'm sort of flipping it inside out. So instead of putting my circle laying in that direction, I'm going to turn it facing out. The edges that were on the inside that I cut to make it into forks are now pointing outward. And the outer curved edges are facing inward. That is a pretty red, like a rose. And I do that on all four sides and I'm looking at where the fold is on the white paper so that I can align them properly. Now, now when you look at this, you have just turned a circle into a square. That was a neat trick, right? A square with a little white section missing in the middle, but it looks like curtains or, it's really, really cute. Now I can take halves and since I took two of those circles and cut them, I can place them like so. So I add a little glue and add them along that edge. And that's the beauty of having all of your circles be the same size, tracing and cutting carefully, then your design fits together better because all of the circles are uniform. They're all the same size. So now we've used halves, we've used fourths. I don't think I want to use any whole circles because our paper is limited in size. So Let's see, maybe I will use the black to do eights. So I start off by folding in half and then folding in half again. And this magazine paper is relatively thin and easy to fold a number of times and very carefully fold it one more time to make it into eight equal parts, fraction we call eighths. And when I open this up, I have eight pizzas, eight pieces like the, a pizza pie. A lot of times when you order pizzas, it will have eight slices. So let's cut those into eights. going to do a little overlapping. I think it would look lovely to have some of these eighths on top of some of the other shapes that are already in our design. Hmm, that presents a problem on this edge. So I'm glad I haven't glued anything down. 
because now I think that is a better solution. I think that fits better. Okay. Very nice. So as I go around and add these on, remember that the things that you have around your house, like junk mail, old magazines, they can provide some very beautiful materials for making art. And even if you don't have those sort of things, you could color a piece of paper to make it the color that you want using crayons or markers or whatever you have on hand. Painted papers are pretty too. The shine on these magazine pages just makes this just that much more fun. So as I go around, as I go around, I'm adding all of the pieces. I don't want to leave any out. I don't want to use six of the eight. I want to use all eight eighths in my design. Hmm. What else could I do? I think I'll add some of this color. Now there are a few words on this circle, but I couldn't resist. This, this looks like a piece of orange. It looks very delicious. <laughs> delicious, yummy color. I'm going to use fourths again. All right. I've done a couple of these today. It's been an idea that I woke up with this morning. Sometimes ideas come to me at night or first thing in the morning I'll wake up and an idea will pop into my head and I'll just have to make what I've been thinking of because it'll just keep rolling around in my head until I just can't think about anything else. And the best way to get it out of my head is to put my hands to work. It reminds me of something I tell my students all the time. Art comes from the head to the heart to the hands. Ideas and thoughts and ideas and memories and all kinds of information that you have in your head inspires your work. And once you feel inspired, sometimes you just have to do it. Wow, I, I that orange color just really made this just more amazing. This feels like I need that part to stick a little better. Wow. And that red is just so amazing. So I've done some other designs like this one. And this one I did use a hole. And then there are halves here. And there are fourths here. It sort of makes an illusion of a square when you look here. And then small pieces, eighths there. And here's yet another one. Here's that green I was telling you about. That grass green. And this was blue sky. You can see parts of the clouds right here. This is a concert hall. Those, those are tiny little people in there listening <laughs> to a show up in the balcony areas. So remember, we were just using fractions to make our shapes today using a circle that keeps it kind of harmonious and unified and using parts of the same shape even though we use lots of different colors. So come back again with me and we'll make more cool stuff.